Today, we're going to check out these three mid-range laptops from Microsoft and from Apple. We have the M2 MacBook Air, we have the Surface Laptop 5, and we have the M3 base model MacBook Pro. So let's go ahead and take a look at the performance, the features, and the pricing to see which one might make sense for you. So let's start off with the specs of these computers, the price of these computers, and the price of these computers on sale right now. Starting with the 13-inch M2 MacBook Air, this is the baseline configuration with 8 gigabytes of unified memory and 256 gigabytes of storage. The regular price of this machine is $1,099. Next up is the Surface Laptop 5 with an upgraded configuration. This has the i5-1235U processor, 16 gigabytes of memory, and 512 gigabytes of SSD storage. The regular price for this configuration is $1,499. Then there's the M3 MacBook Pro, which again is the baseline configuration with 8 gigabytes of memory and 512 gigabytes of SSD storage. And the regular price for this machine is $1,599. Now there are actually some really good deals on all of these computers right now using the links in the description below. You can get this M2 MacBook Air for as low as $899. You can get this Surface Laptop 5 in this configuration with the 16 gigs of memory and 512 gig SSD for as low as $1099. And you can get this M3 MacBook Pro with, again, base configuration all the way down at $1399. So the steepest discount you're gonna find is on the Surface Laptop 5 for about $400, but it is about a year old machine. This MacBook Air M2 is actually about a year and a half old, and this M3 MacBook Pro is about a couple months old. Comparing the design of these three computers, the MacBook Pro and MacBook Air are completely flattened out designs with uh, slightly curved edges, whereas the Surface Laptop 5 has that kind of traditional Ultrabook wedge-shaped design. All of these machines are aluminum all the way around, except for the inside of the Surface Laptop 5, which is that Alcantara material, which is a really fine, soft, premium material that's found in luxury cars and even the SpaceX person capsule, whatever it's called. And I will say that after many years of placing my hands on hot or cold aluminum, that Alcantara is a really nice change of pace. It's just really soft under your hands and it's just nice to feel something different. And I'll get to the screens in a moment, but all of these computers are very portable as well. They have roughly the same footprint, give or take an inch or so. And the MacBook Air M2 weighs 2.7 pounds, the M3 weighs 3.4 pounds, and the Surface Laptop weighs 2.8 pounds. So these two obviously are very close with the MacBook Pro being just slightly heavier. As far as ports go, on the M2 MacBook Air, you get two Thunderbolt 3 slash USB 4 ports, a headphone out, and a MagSafe connection. On the Surface Laptop 5, you get one Thunderbolt 4 port, one USB A port, headphone out, and the Surface connection, which I'll talk about in just a moment. And on this base model MacBook Pro, you do get two Thunderbolt 4 ports, you get an SD card slot, you get HDMI out, you get the headphone out, and you do get that MagSafe connection as well. And just for comparison, here's these two connections. On the left, we have the MagSafe connection for the Apple laptops, which allows the MacBook Air to fast charge at 65 watts and the MacBook Pro to fast charge at 87 watts or something like that. And over here, we have the dock connector, which allows the Surface Laptop to fast charge at 65 watts. But this connection can also be used as a dock connector using the Surface Dock for display connections or additional USB ports or whatever. The MagSafe connection for Apple does not do anything other than power. But the problem with both of these is there's better options out there using the USB-C ports built into the laptops. This is the Revo Dock Pro 9-in-1 docking station from channel partner Ugreen. With this dock, you can connect two external displays to your Mac, even if you're running something like the M1 or M2 chip, like these computers right here, or even a Mac Mini. And of course, you can connect it with Windows as well. This dock is able to give you up to two external displays at 4K 60Hz, which makes expanding your productivity easy. You can use either HDMI or DisplayPort to connect your displays, which can be a mirror of your built-in display, or one or both can be extended to give you three different screens when using a laptop. This docking station also has two 10 gigabit USB-A ports and a 10 gigabit USB-C port on the front for connecting peripherals or external storage. You can connect a really fast external SSD to expand your storage for files or use it as a working directory for large projects. If you need a fast and reliable internet connection, there's a one gigabit ethernet port and you can get up to 100 watts of power pass-through using something like the Ugreen Nexode 100 watt charger. So if you want to expand your productivity on any of these machines, you should check out the Ugreen RevoDock Pro 9-in-1 docking station, and you can save using the links and codes in the description below. And my thanks to Ugreen for sponsoring this video. When you open up the displays on all three of these computers, they look very similar. They all have very clean keyboards and nice big trackpads. I love the Magic Keyboard on the Apple laptops because it's the same on basically all of them, and it's the same on the iPad Magic Keyboard, and it's the same on the desktop keyboard. So I'm very used to the Apple Magic Keyboard, and I like it a lot. The Surface Laptop 5 keyboard is very similar, but just 
slightly off. When typing on the Surface Laptop 5, there's just a small hint of some kind of dampening or something that's happening on the keyboard, which makes it feel a little bit different. By no means is it difficult to type on, it's just as good as the Apple keyboards. I'm just more used to the Apple keyboards at this point. And all three of these keyboards are backlit as well. When it comes to trackpads, I definitely prefer the trackpads on the Apple laptops. I find that just moving my finger around on the trackpads on the Apple laptops is smoother and more precise and more consistent than it is on the Windows trackpad. Now, in my opinion, the Surface laptops are probably one of the best trackpads you can get for a Windows machine, but it's just not quite there. Also, it's a diving board style trackpad, which means it's kind of anchored at the top and you can only press down on the trackpad near the bottom. Whereas with the MacBooks, you can tap anywhere you want on the trackpads without having to readjust your finger placement. At the top right of the Mac keyboards, you do have that power button that's also a Touch ID button for logging into your Mac or authorizing purchases. And with the Windows laptop, you have face recognition with Windows Hello, and I like that a lot. This thing just instantly recognizes my face when I open it, which is awesome, and I really wish it would come to the Mac, especially since we have these big cutouts for the notch. Speaking of the notch, let's talk about displays real quick. The M2 MacBook Air has a 13.6 inch liquid retina display at a 16 by 10 ratio and 224 pixels per inch. The Surface Laptop 5 has a 13.5 inch display at three to two aspect ratio and 201 pixels per inch. And the M3 MacBook Pro has a 14.2 inch display at 16 by 10 and 254 pixels per inch. The MacBooks have the notch on top. The Surface Laptop 5 has some pretty big boy bezels. All of these displays are really good, but the slimmer, more modern bezels on the Macs definitely make them stand out compared to the Surface Laptop. With all of these displays having a pixel density over 200, they all look great and fantastic with text. I have no issues with any one of them. The MacBook Pro does have ProMotion technology to automatically ramp up the display refresh rate up to 120 hertz, but the MacBook Air and the Surface Laptop are stuck at 60. As far as brightness goes, the M2 MacBook Air gets up to 500 nits with regular SD content, the Surface Laptop up to 400 nits, and the MacBook Pro at up to 600 nits. All three of these are extremely usable in bright offices and bright rooms. The M3 MacBook Pro pulls way ahead in displaying HDR content at up to 1600 nits, whereas the Surface Laptop 5 can do HDR 400 or up to 500 nits, and the M2 MacBook Air just sticks to its regular 500 nits of brightness. They're all glossy displays, which means they have quite a bit of reflectivity, with the Surface Laptop, I think, having the most reflectivity, followed very close by the M2 MacBook Air, with the M3 MacBook Pro having a slightly better anti-reflective ability. Overall, I would say that the Surface Laptop 5 has a very good display, the M2 MacBook Air has a great display, and the M3 MacBook Pro has an amazing display but the Surface Laptop is a touchscreen, which is a big bonus over the Macs. I do wish that touchscreens would come to the Mac because sometimes it is just nicer or more comfortable depending on how you're sitting with your computer to reach up and touch the display. It's not something that I need or want all of the time, but it would be really nice to have that option. And at this point, I really don't think there's any reason not to bring it to the Mac. For reference and comparison, this is the built-in camera and microphones inside the 14-inch M3 MacBook Pro. This is a 1080p webcam and this is a three mic array. And in the M2 MacBook Air, this is also a 1080p webcam and a different set of microphones in this computer, but the picture quality should look very similar to the M3 MacBook Pro. And inside the Surface Laptop 5, we do have a 720p camera and its own set of microphones, and the picture quality is noticeably less good, I would say, to be fair. But next up, speaker comparison. Now, when it comes to performance, I had a pretty good idea of what to expect going into this test because a couple weeks ago, I did a comparison of the M1 MacBook Air compared to the Surface Laptop Go 3. And the Surface Laptop 5 actually uses the same processor that's in it, just clocked up a little bit. But the reason I chose these three devices is because of the price point of these devices. This is the upgraded model, again, of the Surface Laptop 5, the base model M2 MacBook Air, and the base model M3 MacBook Pro. 
and they're all just kind of fit in the general pricing range of these types of laptops. The M2 has an eight core CPU at 3.5 gigahertz and an eight core GPU. The Surface Laptop 5 has a 10 core CPU with 12 threads at 2.4 gigahertz and an Intel Xe GPU. And the M3 has an eight core CPU at 4.1 gigahertz and a 10 core GPU. And again, the regular retail prices of these machines are 1099, 1499 and 1599. So first up, checking Geekbench 6, which does a lot of performance tests to kind of simulate what a regular user does on their computer. The Surface Laptop 5 did better in multi-core performance than it did in single core performance, with the MacBook Air M2 being about 17% faster in single core and around 7% faster in multi-core. And the M3 MacBook Pro is 40% faster in single core and 30% faster in multi-core. The Surface Laptop 5 did not do quite as well with Cinebench 2024, with the MacBook Air being about 27% faster in single core performance and 32% faster in multi-core performance compared to the Surface Laptop 5. Moving over to graphics performance with OpenCL using Geekbench 6, the MacBook Air was around 98% faster than the Surface Laptop 5, and the M3 MacBook Pro was an astonishing 160% faster. And checking game performance with the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmarks with medium settings and around 720p resolution. The Surface Laptop 5 got 26 frames per second. The MacBook Air M2 got 37 frames per second. And the M3 MacBook Pro got 70 frames per second. Now when you step way back from benchmarks and gaming, all three of these machines perform regular daily computing tasks just fine. Great even. Whether you're surfing the web or checking email or streaming videos or creating documents locally on the computers, like no issue with any of these in regular day-to-day -day performance for my regular day-to-day -day business apps. But if you are looking for something with a little more oomph, if you're a creative professional with photo editing or video editing, then these two machines are going to be a bit faster than the Surface Laptop 5. Now, one other thing as far as performance is concerned is fan noise, and the MacBook Air M2 has no fan, so it's dead silent all the time. The M3 MacBook Pro does have a fan, except you basically never ever hear it unless you're running Geekbench or Cinebench for a long stretch of time. And the Surface Laptop 5's fan will come on with regular daily use of surfing the web or watching YouTube or whatever. You will hear it, but it's actually a very low volume. It's much better than many of the other PC laptops that I use. And when it comes to battery life, all of these kind of promise all day battery life with Microsoft saying you should get about 18 hours of typical use on the Surface. Apple says you should get about 18 hours as well on the M2 MacBook Air and up to 22 hours on the M3 MacBook Pro. So with all of that out of the way, all of these machines are pretty good. They will all do your regular computing tasks. They all have beautiful bright displays and they all have very comfortable trackpads and keyboards to use to do all of your computing stuff. That being said, the performance of these two Macs compared to the Surface Laptop 5 is pretty darn clear. The Macs definitely have the edge in performance. So depending on what type of work you need beyond regular computing, if you're a creative professional, you may wanna look at other options than the Surface Laptop 5, even other PC options. And if you are a Windows user, then maybe this is the only option for you because you want a first party computer made by the manufacturer who makes the operating system. And these are great computers. I love the Surface devices. I keep buying them. But if you don't need Windows and you're at least curious in checking out a Mac, then definitely check out these two options right here. But what do you guys think? Are you guys interested in checking out any one of these computers? If so, let me know which one in the comments down below. And if you do wanna see my video comparing the M1 MacBook Air to the new Microsoft Surface Laptop Go 3, check out this video right over here. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it. Hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.